today. Amen. And I just, you, you really need to pay attention to everything that is going to be spoken today. Because if you'll really open yourself up to receive what is being spoken, it will impart faith into your spirit. Amen. It will impart faith into your life. Now, the title of the message is this. Greater works you shall do because I go to the Father. Amen. Now, our text today is John chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. Look what the word of the Lord said. I want you to really pay attention to every word that is, that is spoken here by Jesus. He says, do not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The works, say the word, the words, excuse me, I didn't say the word. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Now say the works. The works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the works' sakes. Works themselves, amen? Verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And what? Greater works than these he will do. Because why? I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now the first thing I want to... Don't put the PowerPoint up there yet. Leave the other one up there. Now the first thing that I want to look at is the statement that Jesus made. That the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these, he will do. Amen? Amen? Now, what exactly does Jesus mean by this statement? Well, the question that needs to be asked is this. What kind of works did Jesus do? Amen? Well, he did all kinds of works of kindness and mercy when he walked this earth, and he also did many works of miracles. Can you say amen? amen? Now look how this word works is used in John chapter 5 to describe a miracle Jesus did. Now listen to this. This is important to look at because Jesus said in our text in John chapter 14, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these, he will do. He said that to his disciples after, say after, after, after they already seen and heard what we're about to read. Okay? So they heard Jesus say, greater works you shall do, because I go to the Father. And they, they're, they're, they're hearing this statement by Jesus after they already seen and heard what we're about to read about. Keep that in mind. Now look, there's a lot of scriptures we're going to read right now, so pay attention. John chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Look what it says. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, uh, Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, Paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well in whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he already had been in this condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it is the Sabbath, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, 
He who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who, was, who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn. A multitude being in that place, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more. Least the worst thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now. Keep these words in mind. And I have been working. Therefore the Jews saw all the more to kill him because not only he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do, for whatever he does, the son also does in like manner. Now here's, I read all that to get to this point. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he himself will show him what? Greater, Greater what? Greater. Works than these that you may marvel. Then you jump to verse 36. But I have greater witness than John's for the what? Works. Which the Father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Can you say amen? amen. As we read after the healing at the pool, Jesus affirmed that the works he did were those which the Father showed him. And the Greek word for works in John chapter 5 is the same Greek word that's used for works in John chapter 14 in our text that we read. Look again now with, with this in mind, what Jesus said in John uh, 14, 10 through 12 again. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sakes of the works themselves. Most assured I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And also in greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Amen? Amen. So with them already seeing the miracle we just read about in John chapter 5. And hearing the words Jesus used to explain the miracle, he tells them as we read, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works than these he will also do. I'm stressing this point. I'm stressing this point here. This is important to highlight because what I want to be imparted into all of your hearts is that God wants to do all kinds of works through you, including miracles. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Now I want to make something very clear. The reason believers would do greater works is because Jesus' ministry on earth was only for around three years. So the reason for greater works done not necessarily in quality, but greater in number and scope is because Jesus went to the Father. Amen. 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 Which brings us to the next point. Again, I'm doing a lot more teaching today than preaching, but if you get what I'm teaching you today and it comes alive to your spirit, man, it'll transform your life. Amen. Some of you have read these scriptures many times, but it only takes that one more time for you to read it for it to just come so alive to your spirit, to explode inside of you. And when it explodes inside of you, it becomes real to you, and then you start walking in it. Amen? Amen. 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 See, what I'm trying to do in this church is trying to get what you know in the intellect into your spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Too many of us have intellectual knowledge about this. You can probably even quote it. But you don't know it in your spirit. Right. Therefore, you don't walk in it. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Let's look what Jesus says in John 16, 7, where Jesus tells us what he would do when he goes to the Father. Because remember, Jesus said, greater works than these you shall do because I go to the Father. Right? He says, greater works than these you shall do in our text because I go to the Father. Now, let's look at John chapter 16, verse 7, where Jesus tells us what he would do when he goes to the Father. Look what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, who is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Amen? Amen. So Jesus said, if I depart, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. Now Jesus' promise of sending the Holy Spirit was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. Amen. When many believers were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 22, 33 confirms this. Yeah. Look what Acts 2, 33 says, confirms this by saying, go ahead, Acts 2, 33. It says these words. It says, therefore being exalted to the right hand of God and having received, this is about Jesus, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He, Jesus, poured out this which you now see and hear. Amen. 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 So in John chapter 14, Jesus said, greater works you shall do because I go to the Father. In John chapter 16, Jesus says, I must depart because when I go, I will send the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, we see that the Holy Spirit was poured out. Again, this verse says, therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and I received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He, Jesus, poured out this, which you now see and hear. This is referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? amen? And as I talked about last week, Jesus said in Acts 1.8 that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. As I also mentioned last week, the word power in Acts 1.8 is the Greek word dunamis, which is used for miraculous power. Now, when the Holy Spirit came upon the early believers, listen to me, they received miracle working power. Amen. Amen. And here's the point I want to get to. This is the power, this dunamis power, this miracle working power. This is the power that enables believers to do greater works that Jesus talked about in John 14. Amen, amen. The reason why believers would be able to do greater works is because they would be filled with miracle-working power. Amen, amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. See, when you piece together John 14, 12, John 16, 7, and Acts 1, 8, you understand Jesus is saying he will be leaving the earth, and when he does, he will be sending the Holy Spirit who will empower believers to do the works that he does and even greater works. Amen. You gotta get this, amen. Praise God. Five of you are understanding this. Are you getting this? Amen. Now, before Jesus started his public ministry, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power to do the works that he did. Acts 10, 37 and 38 confirms this. Look what it says. Acts 10, 37 and 38. Amen. It says these words. The word you know, that word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Say with power. Who went about, so after he was anointed with power, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. See, after Jesus got filled with the Holy Spirit, Luke 14, 4 confirms that he returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And Jesus tells us in Luke 4.18 why he was filled with the Spirit. Look what he says, Luke 4.18. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? 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 Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty 
to the captives and recover your sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Amen? Amen? This is why he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Are you here this morning? Amen. See, Jesus was anointed. Uh, he was filled with the power of the Spirit for the work of the ministry. And we all know that in his ministry, he preached with authority. He, he cast out devils. Uh, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. And the result was multitudes became believers. And on top of that, Jesus overcame every temptation of the devil. Amen? Amen. Now these verses make it clear that the works that Jesus did were connected with the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? amen? The works, because he's talked about the works that he did in John 14. And the works that he did are connected with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now the word power in these verses in Acts 8, excuse me, Acts 10, 38, and Luke 10, excuse me, Luke 4, 18 is the Greek word dunamis. Listen, this is very important. The power that described, the word that described the power that Jesus walked in is the Greek word dunamis. Amen. Keep that in mind. Because this is the same Greek word used in Acts 1.8 that Jesus said will come upon those baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Which means what Jesus is saying that those that are baptized with the Holy Spirit will be filled with the same power that He walked in when He walked this earth. I know that's mind-boggling, but that's what he's taking, that's what he's saying. Dunamis power. Dunamis power. Amen? Amen? If you read through the book of Acts, it's clear that those that got baptized with the Holy Spirit, they walked in the same dunamis power that Jesus walked in. Amen. Amen. If you read through the book of Acts, you know that they preached with power and authority. They cast out devils. They raised the dead. And they healed the sick. And the result of them walking with this power was that thousands got saved. Amen. And they also walked in holiness, overcoming the devil's temptations. Why? Why did all this happen? Because they walked with the same dunamis power that Jesus walked in. Are you getting this? The early church, they walked with the same power. That Jesus walked in. Amen. Man, Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Look on the screen here. I want you guys to really catch this. It's a quote from Michael Brown, who writes in his book, Authentic Fire. He says in Acts 1 8, where Jesus stated before his ascension, But you shall receive power, dunamis, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and the ends of the earth. This did not only mean boldness. Rather, it referred in particular to the supernatural endowment of divine power to work miracles in Jesus' name. Thereby testifying or bearing witness to his resurrection from the dead. This becomes particularly clear when it is remembered that the plural of dunamis, namely dunamis, is used frequently to refer to the miracles in the New Testament as noted before, as noted above. We see then in Acts 4.33 that the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of Jesus with great dunamis, while in Acts 6.8 it is recorded that Stephen, full of grace and power, dunamis, was doing great wonders and signs among the people, which indicates that this dunamis was not only for the apostles, and this is confirmed in, again in uh, 1 Corinthians 12.10, in uh, 28 and 29, were working, working of miracles, again, from the Greek dunamis, is given to believers in general, not only the apostles. This is reiterated in uh, Galatians 3, 5, speaking in the present tense to believers there about the Spirit working miracles. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and work miracles dunamis among you do so by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Again, the simple question would be, if the Spirit that comes upon believers today carries the dunamis of God, 
why shouldn't we expect to see some of the same demonstrations of power that took place in the Gospels and Acts? When did the dunamis of the Spirit change? Where is it in written or even hinted that the Spirit no longer includes God's dunamis? It doesn't. Amen. Why should we expect anything different today? Amen, amen, amen. If the same Holy Spirit is here, and the same Holy Spirit that dwelt in them dwells in us, why should we not expect the same results? Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? The reason why we know is because we listen to Dr. Doubt on the radio. Hello. So you to be careful who you listen to. The garbage you let to be deposited into your spirit. All doubt does is rob you. It steals from you. And it hinders God from moving your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell you, if you, if it, you shouldn't listen to no preaching if they ain't Holy Ghost filled. Amen? They don't believe in miracles. They don't believe in the supernatural. Amen? Amen. And this brings me to my next point. That the same power, listen to me, the same power that Jesus walked in, that the apostles walked in, to do the works that Jesus did is still available for us today to walk in. Amen. It's still Amen. available. Amen. It's still available for us. It's still available. So I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to teach this today. Because I want this to come alive to all of you so that you will dare to believe God for greater works. So that we can see the supernatural take place. So that God can work through us so that multitudes can be saved. It's not so that, oh, we can get all puffed up and look how God used me. It ain't about you. And if that's your attitude, that will keep you from being used by God. God resists the proud. But if it's about, I want to reach these souls, and I have, I have a heart for these people. I want to see them transformed. I want to see them change. God, use my life. Touch them. Set them free. When you have a right heart, then God can use you. Amen, amen. But when it's about you, you hinder the hand of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. So I'm teaching you all this. Because I want to build your faith. Amen. And when your faith is built, then you'll expect. And you'll walk in assurance. You'll walk in boldness. Not in arrogance, but in assurance Amen. of God showing up. See, there's a difference. It's hard to, you know, those who truly walk assured of God's word, they can come off looking arrogant. It's not that they're arrogant. They just know who they are in Christ. God wants us to know who we are in Christ. God wants us to know what we have in Him. He wants us to know what He's promised us, what's available to us. Amen, amen. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you. Because see, I know that God is going to do tremendous things. This, 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 uh, we're entering a season that God is just, just beginning to really pour out His Spirit. You mark my words, we're going to see a move of God like we've never seen before in this ministry. But in order to really get there, we got to keep, i got to keep teaching you. i got to keep speaking these messages to impart it into your spirit so that it gets from here to here. Amen. Because when it gets here in your spirit, when you speak it, when you walk it and you believe it, they'll come to pass. Amen. Amen. But when you speak it from here and you're just trying to just do it from here, every once in a while you may see it happen. But it's totally different from when you walk in the, in the Spirit. From your Spirit, man. 
Amen? So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this and I'm preaching this and because I know where God's leading us. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, so that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is why it's so important to teach this stuff so that you will have faith in the word of God. My prayer is that this explodes in your spirit. My, faith, my, my, my prayer is that each of you would believe this on a personal level so that wherever you go and whatever you do, that you would expect to do greater works. That you would expect to do greater works. Because Jesus promised it. He promised it. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now there are many things that we can look at of why we can expect to do greater works that Jesus did. But we're going to only look at two main things. Number one, the promise in John 14, 12 to do greater works is a universal promise. I want to read this. Look at this. Look how the New, King, uh, the New Living Translation says John 14, 12. I want you to really pay attention. I love how it says it. Watch this. I tell you the truth. Anyone. Say anyone. Anyone. Come on, say anyone. Anyone. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I go to be with the Father. Oh, that's amazing. Come on, man. That's good stuff. That excites me at least. Praise God. You're about to get a come on, man. That's some good stuff. Man, I want this to come alive to you. Oh, it's come so alive to me recently. Now, I tell you, I've read this scripture a million times, but man, I'll tell you, the million, the first time I read it, boom, it exploded in my spirit. It just exploded, amen. Oh, my goodness, and I want it to explode in your spirit. Come on, look at it again. Oh, you may just need to read it one more time, amen. I tell you the truth, praise Chapel Pittsburgh. Amen, anyone who believes in me, will do the same works I have done, even greater works, because I'm going to be with the Father. Amen. 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 Yeah. Now the Greek phrase for whoever believes in me in this verse, listen to me, this is very important, is always used in a universal application in the book of Acts. It's just further, you know, uh, uh, backing up this, 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 this claim that it's a universal promise. Let me show you a few verses here. John 6, 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never, shall never thirst. Universal promise. John 11, 20. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. John 12, 46 and then 44 through 46. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in, uh, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Those are all universal promises. And the point is this. The promise in John 14, 12 cannot be limited to only the apostles who heard him based on the language that he talked in. Whoever believes in me. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. That means the promise is for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on. Get this. Oh. Holy Spirit, let this just be deposited in their spirit. Let there be an impartation. Let this word come so alive. Let the truth make them free. I pray every doubting, lying thought that has come to their minds to try to rob them from walking in the fullness of the Spirit, in the fullness of power, I pray, would be broken in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you lose revelation knowledge. Oh, God, loose revelation knowledge that, that greater works you've called us to do because you go to the Father. When you go to the Father, you send the Holy Ghost who empowers us to do greater works. And so we receive this power. We receive this in the name of Jesus, God. Impart it into their lives, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen? Amen? The second thing I want to point out is in John 14, 12. Listen to this. If John 14, 12, if John 14, 12 is a universal promise to do greater works, 
and the greater works are done by the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, then that power must also be available for us today. Amen. Are you understand what I'm saying here? Let's look and see if Scripture teaches if the baptism with the Holy Spirit where believers are getting due with power is still available for us today. I want, to, I want us to first look carefully at the words the Apostle Peter said in Acts 2, 15 through 17. He explains to the crowd here what's going on because they heard the men speaking in tongues in their own language when they got baptized with the Holy Spirit. He starts off explaining to them about what was happening by saying this. For these are not drunk as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. But this, and he's referring to to the Spirit being poured out on them and speaking in tongues and then being baptized with the Holy Ghost is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. You know, we, we're singing that song today. Come like you promised. Pour out your Spirit. That's this. Amen. That's this promise right here. Come like you promise. Pour out your spirit. Amen. Pour out your spirit. Amen. That's right here. And it's right for us to sing that because we're living in the last days. Amen. And so we should be praying. We should be singing that with all our heart. Come. Come like you promised. Amen. Pour out your spirit. Amen. Pour out your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Pour out your spirit. Now, most will agree that the phrase last days refers to the era of the church, the church age from Pentecost to the return of Christ. 1 Peter 5, 1, 5 says these words. 1 Peter 1, 5 says, Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. Amen. The word salvation in 1 Peter 5 is referring to the second coming. And since the second coming hasn't taken place yet, we're still living in the last times, the last days, which is the church age. Amen? And according to Acts 2, 15 through 17, which we just read, this is the time the Holy Spirit is being poured out. We're living in the last days, church. This is the time that the Holy Spirit is being poured out. We're living in the last days, church. A time, listen to me, a time that should be marked by the outpouring of the Spirit. Amen. This word was spoken and the early church responded. And they seen an outpouring. Yes. This same word is spoken to us. But are we going to respond like them? If we want to see God do what He did then, then we need to respond like they did. Are you getting this? Amen. Are you getting this? I, I just pray that you get this. Now after He preached to the crowd, Acts 2.37 tells us how they responded. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter responded in Acts 2.38-39, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall, listen to this, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, say the promise. promise. The promise referring to the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord will call. Amen. The promise is for you. Yeah, you ought to praise him. Amen. The promise is for you. Look at this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as yes. the Lord our God will call. Yes. Are you called? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And the promise is for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Amen. It's not only for the, the pastors or the evangelists or the worship team leaders or Sister anointed, brother anointed. You understand what I'm saying? It's for everyone. Amen, amen. The promise is for you. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. The promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for you. 
So I hope that you're all seeing that the same power that Jesus walked in and the apostles walked in to do the works that they did is still available for us today. Now let's look real quickly back to our text. In John 14, 12, I want to ask you a question. Who did Jesus say would do greater works than he did? What did he, who did he say? Look at the verse. Who did he say would do greater works? Look at this. Look at the screen there. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who what? Believes. He who what? Believes. He who what? Believes. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Amen. It's those who believe. It's those who believe that will do greater works. Can you say amen? Amen. The person who will do greater works is he who believes. The person who believes must also ask this in Jesus' name. That's what Jesus talks about in the next verse. Look at verse 13 and 14. John 14, 13 and 14. It says, there, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. That the Father may be glorified the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Huh. Are you getting this? Amen. Amen. See, greater works you should do. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Whatever you ask in my name. Believing and asking in Jesus' name goes with what Jesus teaches in Mark 16, 17, and 18. Look at it. Look what he says. John, Mark 16, 17, 18. It says these words. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. <clears throat> And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we've seen in John 14, he who believes will do greater works if they ask anything in his name. Jesus says right here, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. So these signs will follow those who what? Believe, and if they ask anything in his name, they will what? They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, if they have, they, uh, drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Is this not the works that Jesus did? Amen. Is this not the works the apostles did? Amen. And he's saying this is the works for all who will believe. Will do. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you getting this? Yes. See, this promise wasn't only for them. It's for us. Today also. Amen. This right here tells you why people don't, you know, see miracles. This is why Dr. Doubt preaches against miracles. Because he don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> I don't believe in that stuff. Well, that's why you don't see miracles. Out of your own mouth, you're telling us why you don't see it. Because he said these signs will follow those who believe. Amen. 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 I don't believe in that stuff. That's only for the early church. When the last apostle died, it was done. Get the doubt out. Turn the radio off. Turn the channel. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I confess that I believe. And therefore, I have seen many demons cast out of people. I have seen many people healed. And I speak in tongues unashamedly. Amen. And I don't know if I drink anything deadly. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, then praise God, I'm still living that so Amen. <laughs> so I can tell you, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yep. A man with experience 
is never at the mercy of a man with an opinion. Amen. You mean like me telling, you know, Chico, man, you didn't drive here today. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I drove here today. Man, you didn't drive here today. I don't believe you. No, I, I drove. I drove here today. Oh, man, I don't believe you. No, I, I, I drove. See, it doesn't matter what I'm telling him I don't believe. He knows it to be true because he experienced it. Amen. You can't tell me an for today. I've experienced it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And many of you have experienced it too. So don't let nothing rob you from believing God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Now I'm closing. What I want to stress is one of the main purposes for miracles is for the furthering of the gospel. And with more people living today than ever before, and it's more wicked than ever before. Why, I ask this question, why would God want these signs to cease? He wouldn't. Amen. Why would He want these miracles to cease? He wouldn't. If, if they were used to reach the lost back then, how much more are they needed to reach the lost today? Amen, amen. I'm going to say this, and it may shock some of you. Billy Graham is a powerful, dynamic, one of the greatest evangelists in our modern time, probably ever. Amen. But also, there's a man named Reinhard Bonnke, yeah. who not only preaches the gospel, but believes for miracles. Yes. And in his crusades, they've had a million people get saved in one service. More than anyone. Again, I'm not taking away from Billy Graham. Billy Graham preaches the word in salvation. He's dynamic, he's powerful, this and that. But he leaves it there with salvation. Right on bonky. Does the work truly of what we see in evangelists in Philippians, I mean in Acts chapter 8. Philip, the only person in the whole entire Bible called an evangelist is Philip. And Philip went to Samaria and he not only preached the word, but he also seen miracles, signs, and wonders accompany his ministry. And multitudes got saved. Amen, amen. What am I saying? I'm saying... We need, yes, to preach the word and it'll get results. Multitudes will get saved, but we also need the supernatural. Amen. To confirm the word with signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I see Reinhard Bonnke as an, as an evangelist in its fullest extent. Because he's not only proclaiming the word in Salvation Crusades, but also believing for God to confirm his word with signs and wonders. Amen. And that man's ministry has probably won more people to the Lord than anyone. Oh. Reinhard Bonnke, look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamic. You see crusades as far as you can see people with the eye are multitudes. God gave him a vision of a blood-washed Africa. This German man going to Africa and being used powerfully. Amen. Amen. Powerfully. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? So don't mistake what I'm saying. Billy Graham is awesome. He's one of the greatest evangelists ever. I want to make sure I emphasize that. I'm not taking away from him. He's dynamic. He's awesome. He's powerful. I, I love his stuff. His preaching is powerful. But we also need supernatural with it. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. Look what Paul wrote right here. I'm going to bring this message to a close. Look what Paul wrote right here in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. I want you to read these words here. Look what Paul said. Watch this. This is my prayer. Oh, this is my prayer. Look at this. 
And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined, listen to this, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now watch this. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom. I can verify that that's my life too. Amen? But in demonstration Amen. of the Spirit and the power. Amen. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. same spirit that he preached demonstrating the reality of the same kingdom Satan's power will be vanquished the sick will be healed the demonized will be set free and most of all the lost will be saved Amen. to me Amen. that sounds like a reason to seek to be filled with the spirit of God Amen. to me that gives me a reason to want to go lay hands on some folks Amen. Amen. and start believing God for miracles Amen. Amen. God can use you Believe me, I've been in your seat before. And I heard preaching, it just stirred my spirit. I'm like, oh man, I mean, I can be used like this? I can go be used in miracles? I can do all this crazy stuff? Praise the Lord. I can walk with the same power the apostles walked in? Whoa! I started just daring believing and just going out and being crazy. Laying hands on everything. Resurrected ant. I'm just joking. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just believe in God. And you know what? If if a miracle doesn't happen, don't, don't let it stop you. You keep praying and keep praying and keep praying. Don't stop. Why some miracles happen and some don't? Why some people get healed? Why people, some people don't? I don't know. I just leave that to God. All I'm called to do is my part. All I'm called to do is my part. And my part is just to step out and believe. And leave the results in God's hands. Amen, amen. amen. God wants us to be a people that are full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, that are bold. Next time you hear someone say, hey man, I'm sick, or I got this issue going on, say, would you mind if I prayed with you? Would you mind if I prayed with you? Do it. Do it. You've been filled with power. Man, I, wanna, I just want to just... Hammer this thing, man. I'm going through this struggle. Would you like me to pray with you? I have this, 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 I feel this oppression on my life. I'm battling with depression. Can I pray with you? Rebuke that thing after your life? I'm going through these struggles, whatever. I need a miracle with finance. Can I pray with you? Let's, come on, let's get radical. Let's be Christians. Amen. Let's be disciples. This is basic Christianity. This ain't no new heavy revy. I'm just reminding you what the Bible already says. If the same Holy Spirit dwells in us that dwelled in them, should we not expect the same results? Amen. 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 Stop selling for less. Amen? Come on, let's give a break. Let's bow our heads and pray for the Lord. Let's bow our heads. I hope you guys got.
Let's bow our heads here.